Hello guys, welcome to my channel Electro King and I have a specially designed a special course for you guys in which I will be covering all the topics required for electric vehicle design and manufacture. For example, the motor selection, the battery selection, the range and the required calculations. For example, the frictional forces acting on the vehicle, the payload and the range, the all the calculations what are required to design an electric vehicle. So I will be covering all the topics. So we will start with the topic more type of motors. Then we will have something called as uh, motor selection calculations, then uh, gear issue selection calculations, then controller features, like what, what things are required in electric vehicle. Then we will jump on to battery type of uh, batteries, maybe lithium ion cells or whatever cells available in the market. Then we will jump on to battery calculations, then BMS and then the charger calculations. So all these topics will be covered in this complete course. So let's start with something called as uh, parameters to be taken in consideration. So first thing, as I feel, budget must be the first criteria you should actually consider whenever you design any project or you are doing any project because uh, you have a set of budget and you will always do any maybe you work within the budget if you don't have any budget you will just keep on adding money and you will never know how much money you have put in your uh, project so let's consider budget and second we will jump on to something called as calculations so calculations we will see what so how much amount of uh, what is required so depending on that we will select a motor and then second, the torque, how much torque is required. Then we will do all this calculation. Then third, we will jump on to RPM. So in RPM, we will see uh, what will be the RPM and how much amount, uh, how much speed we will be getting at the output side and the voltage, how much amount of voltage is required to run the motor and then amps, so how much amount of uh, amp of power is required will be the motor will be consuming to provide us the uh, power in terms of watts. So all these calculations we'll be doing and these are the very important calculation without this you can actually you cannot actually uh, make any vehicle electric vehicle. Then we will jump on to something called as motor selection. So depending on these calculations we will select a motor. Okay and then we will jump on to battery selection. So battery selection maybe you are making making any uh, battery pack or you are buying the battery pack. So these three things are very important that the voltage AH and amp. So voltage is depending on the motor we will select the voltage. AH depending on the range, let's say 100 kilometers of range we, I require. So depending on that, I will select a AH and we will do all this calculation. We will see how to actually calculate the range and everything. And then at the end, we will see the amps, how much amount of amp maximum amp of current the battery can provide. That all depends on the BMS. So let's jump on to the second topic that is motor selection. In motor selection, we will see the type of motors, the advantages of the motors and the availability, the voltage required. I mean to say like DC or AC voltage required and the torque and the RPM, all these things we will cover in motor selection topic. So we have brushless DC motor, permanent magnet synchronous motor, IPM motor, induction motor, switch reluctance motor. Many more motors are available, but still we will focus on these uh, five motors because they are widely available and they are being uh, practically used in the electric vehicles. So let's jump on to the features we desire to be there in electric vehicle. So in this we will see. The first thing is high efficiency. So I desire to be the high efficiency, high efficient vehicle because uh, if you get high efficiency, you will get a uh, calculated range or else you are not going to get a calculated range. First thing, high efficiency. Second is instant power, fast torque, high acceleration, high power density, low cost and robustness. This seven, according to me, the very important uh, features to be should be there in the electric vehicle. Apart from the technical uh, parts, let's say we have uh, artificial intelligence in your vehicle, the monitoring system and all other things. Apart from that, there should be these seven features to support a good electric vehicle. Then we will jump on to battery selection. So in battery selection, basically we will see few things that is battery type, voltage, then uh, capacity in edge and what are and discharge current in amps. So depending on all these calculations, we will come to a conclusion that what type of battery is required, how much will be the charging time, discharge time and uh, the range, how much range we are going to get. So we will that all the uh, calculations will be covered in uh, battery selection calculations. So let's jump on to the first thing that is DC series motor. By the way, DC series motor is not in this topic, but, uh, but still I am covering it because all the motors mostly have a similar type of a structure. So Let's start with DC series motor. In DC series motors, we have brushes. Okay, brush system we have, commutator we have, permanent magnet we have, and housing and all this core winding and all this we have. So this type of motors were initially used in uh, Tesla, I feel because I have read somewhere. So the reason right now this type of mot uh, motors are not in use, the reason is the brushes and the commutator. 
what is happening basically is brushes uh, we provide the voltage through you can see right in the black wire we provide the voltage from here and the brushes get rub across the commutator and lots of heat is generated and wherever there is friction and you will obviously uh, face uh, heat and because of heat what is happening basically is the brushes are getting damaged so time to time you have to change the brushes and you have uh, internal core core heat we have in this so the uh, heat remains in the core and which basically damage the permanent magnet and uh, you you get a very less efficiency so because of the brushes and the commutator this type of motors are right now not been used in electric vehicle because there are lots of maintenance and personally i don't require any maintenance in my electric vehicle i just want an electric vehicle that have very less or no maintenance so because of this reason uh, the dc motor is currently not in use in electric vehicles so basically all the motors have a similar type of a structure they have a winding they have a core iron core they have then they have a magnet and we provide the voltage depending on the type of motor maybe if you have dc series motor we provide through the brushes or else we provide directly the winding so how it's happening is here brushless dc motor to remove all the disadvantages of a dc series motor we have something called as brushless dc motor in this video i will not be explaining you how uh, basically all the motors work you will get tons of videos on internet on youtube you can go and search how brushless motors work they will be explaining you with uh, good examples and animations too but i will be giving you the brief idea like uh, why you should actually use any choose any motor depending on the criteria of efficiency then the working temperature voltage type at the um, the repairable the advantages all this basic uh, based on this we will be selecting the motor so the the major advantage in this type of motors is we don't have any brush and the commutators so there is no internal heat and there is no friction so there is no losses in this the advantage in this is high starting torque you will get a really high starting torque high efficiency of around 85 to 93 percent and another advantage is uh, preferred to be electric vehicle application due to the traction characteristics it have a really good tractions traction so because of which you will get a very high torque too and the cost if you talk about the cost uh, this type of motors are a bit costly but they will last long uh, for example let's say maybe uh, 10000 or 20000 kilometers uh, you can actually achieve uh, in hours you can achieve the Uh, range the reason you should choose this type of motors is the efficiency the availability they are widely available in the market even you can buy it on uh, aliexpress or amazon or any other website ebay they are all available okay internationally they are available and nationally they are available uh, everywhere you are going to find this type of motors brushless dc motors and they are very easy to work you just have to do the basic connections there are no technical knowledge is required in this okay you just have to do basic connections and then you can achieve achieve the output from this type of motors and this type of motors are widely used in the chinese market japanese okay this this vehicles are available widely in india and they are all they all are using the brushless dc motors maybe in the type of uh, hub this type of hub, this type of hub motors they are used in the electric vehicles mostly chinese uh, vehicles are using this type of motors and you can see the difference here this is the brushless dc motor and this is the brushed dc motor we don't have brushes we have just hall, have a hall effect sensors here then we have permanent magnets and the rotor is there here we have commutator and brushes so this this portion is removed in the uh, brushless dc motor and in place in that place we have you, we are using hall effect sensor which actually tell you the exact position of the winding and we actually control the speed of the motor so this is how basically the brushless dc motor look like and uh, this there are two type of they are they are available in two categories one is something called as mid drive wherein you can drive the system using belt or chain and we have other type that is called as the hub drive okay wherein indirectly in the hub you get the motor and you can actually mount a tire on this and internally you have a braking system maybe a drum or a disc brake whatever the company provides you depending on that you can actually choose the motor personally i feel you have greater advantage in mid drive system because you can actually calculate the gear ratio and you can arrange the torque and the rpm you can actually set the torque and rpm and depending on that you can achieve a speed and even you can increase the payload capacity of the vehicle and again you can actually increase the range to depending on the gear ratio so you have lots of control in the mid drive system 
even you can see uh, ola and ether this type of vehicle actually use the mid drive system only only the chinese vehicle use this type of uh, motors hub motors because they don't have to do lots of calculations just have to mount the motor and the work is done let's jump on to something called as permanent magnet synchronous motor work on ac voltage here is the major difference uh, in brushless dc motor and the um, pmsm motor but their structure their working is very basically same okay working temperature they can work at minus 60 degree up to 300 degree celsius so greater amount of uh, heat capacity is there heat and the cold capacity is here so it can work at extreme cold temperature even extreme heat temperature life cycles you will get a really good life cycle in this just like uh, bldc motor efficiency you get 90 2% to 97% of efficiency so if you design the electric vehicle using this motor you can actually achieve your calculated range in this reliable uh, repairable i mean repairable yes they are repairable magnet the magnet used in this permanent magnet is used in this can withstand around 700 to 800 degrees celsius the reason why we actually see how much amount of heat it can actually uh, withstand the reason is for example if i am working at a very high temperature for example i am in sahara desert maybe and i am riding the vehicle with the uh, payload of uh, 100% payload i am putting it and the motor will produce lots of heat at the time there are chances that you might damage the permanent magnet if you damage the permanent magnet the range will reduce you will not get the you you are not going to achieve the uh, highest efficiency or uh, the range in kilometers so that is very important you should actually make sure you are using a very good permanent magnet in this so that we are not losing its uh, features of magnetivity let's see what type of actually vehicle use this type of motors toyota chevrolet ford then we have zero motorcycle they are actually, actually using this type of uh, motors then we uh, then nissan is there honda is there bmw so they are basically used in lost lots of vehicles because of the features that is 92% of efficiency and one more thing one more thing is very important in this is that is the torque this motor can give you a really good amount of torque that is the reason tesla is using permanent mo magnet um, pmsm motor initially just to provide uh, the uh, initial torque and uh, to achieve the uh, rpm and then the tesla is sh uh, shifting it to induction motor so initially the motor is uh, running uh, the vehicle is running on pmsm motor and when it achieve the particular rpm and then um, the tesla is switching to induction motor to achieve the maximum speed okay we will see what are the features of uh, induction motors too so let's see it is just like a bldc motor the working voltage is different that is ac then the motor, most of the vehicle are using this type of motors and we get achieve uh, around 97% of 90 maximum 90% 97% of the efficiency in this motor so this is the zero motorcycle which is actually using this type of motors i really like the design of this vehicle so let's see the features of uh, pmsm motor first thing is uh, ac synchronous motor it is i can generate constant torque maintain full torque at very low speed okay very important point smaller in size doesn't require a uh, very big area to be mounted for the mount full load efficiency is higher than the use of ac induction motor so full load full load means you are putting full load for example the uh, load payload capacity is of uh, 300 kg and you are actually putting 300 kg on the motor and still you will achieve high efficiency at the full load whereas in induction motor you the efficiency will go down you increase the load the efficiency the battery will drain within no time low maintenance cost is required pmsm motors are expensive yeah they are expensive uh, highly and highly efficient so they are ex expensive but they are giving very good efficiency so let's jump on to the next motor that is ipm motor why i am using this motor ipm motor the reason is it is used in high performance electric vehicles okay that is the reason i am actually showing you this type of motor and the vehicle called as ola which is widely used in india is using ipm motor so let's talk about the features of ipm motor the voltage is required is ac that is around 400 to 800 volt of power is required a volt is required to run this motor then working temperature is minus 60 to 300 degrees that is really good again the life cycle is really good 
efficiency that is around 98% 98% efficient this motor is you are going to achieve a really good uh, range if you are using this type of motors so let's talk about the features of uh, ipm motors require ac volts to be get power to for running and uh, around 400 to 800 volts of uh, voltage is required to start running and working temperature is around 62 minus 62 300 degrees of celsius of uh, working temperature it can withstand life cycles you get really good life cycles in this efficiency is the main point main selling point of this motor that is around 98 percent of efficiency you can get so you will get a really good range calculated range you will get in this type of motors repairable yes they are repairable the main reason this type of motors are used in uh, high speed uh, high uh, i mean to say uh, electric sport cars and uh, high performance electric bikes the reason is superior efficiency power density and torque capability you get a really high density of power and torque capabilities you get really high torque you put a good amount of weight and you still you will achieve a high torque in this type of motors it will take any kind of weight okay this is the reason uh, the motors are used in high performance electric vehicles let's jump to the third type of motor that is induction motor so it requires around 800 to 7500 volts of power to start running this motor in ac require a really good amount of voltage and working temperature is minus 20 degrees to 180 degrees and life cycle we have really good high life cycle in this efficiency we can achieve around 95 percent of efficiency at the highest point repairable yes they are repairable Induction motors do not have high starting torque like DC series motors. Okay, in starting torque is very low in this motor. And the biggest advantage is if you provide a good amount of load on this payload, if you increase the payload, the efficiency will drop down just like nothing. And you will uh, you will drain out all the battery within a few kilometers. Okay, so starting torque is low and payload taking capacity is very bad in this type of motors efficiency. So efficiency go down when you uh, increase the payload. That is the reason induction. Uh, that is the reason why the uh, the Tesla is using two type of motors. One is PMS motor. Why the reason is high uh, torque. Okay, we can actually achieve a high torque. Even we can get a very high efficiency at the uh, highest payload. So around 97% of uh, efficiency you will get at the highest payload and you can get high torque too. And here what is happening is when you increase the payload, the efficiency is going down, but it can give you a really good efficiency at the high RPMs. So the if you are achieving, let's say around, um, we have uh, 10,000 RPM of this motor. So we are going at 8,000 to 9,000 RPM continuous. You can achieve around 95% of efficiency. At the high RPM, we can achieve a really good efficiency, but initially low RPM, low torque, you, you, you cannot achieve actually 95% uh, of efficiency. The efficiency goes down. So that is the reason Tesla is using two motors. First, initially PMSM motor, then when it achieves a certain RPM, it shoots, uh, switches to induction motor and then uh, the vehicle is running on induction motor. Let's talk about switch reluctance motor. This type of motor is said to be the feature of an electric vehicle. The reason is there is no winding and there is no magnet on the rotor. You just have a laminated core in the in the rotor side and we have the stator that is with the winding and the magnetic field get interacted with the core, uh, rotor and then the rotational uh, motion is achieved in this type of motors. So we will get lots of videos on this how actually the SRM motors work. The reason why it is said to be the future of electric vehicle, the reason is um you it the motor is really robust in nature okay and a certain other thing is high speed applications we can achieve high speed applications in this and srm motor offer high power density you get really good amount of power density even you can achieve a very good amount of torque in this type of motors with the efficiency of 93 percent okay highest efficiency we can get around 93 percent of the efficiency only the drawback in this type of motors is the complexity of the control and increase the switching circuit here is the major drawback of it and once this drawback is removed from this motor maybe solved and this motors it is surely going to be the future of electric vehicles so one of the type is a switch reluctance motor so let's jump on to the head to head comparison of all this type of motors so voltage required is bldc motor dc pmsm motor ac induction ac srm ac 
efficiency when we talk about let's see the efficiencies the maximum efficiency we achieve in bldc is 93% pmsm 97% induction motor 90 95% srf motor 93% so let's talk about the torque bldc motor we have really good torque in this pmns also we get really good torque induction motor low starting torque we have in in uh, initially it will consume lots of uh, power uh, to achieve the particular rpm so it is a very bad idea to run this motor initially that is the reason tesla is using pmsm motor initially and then it is shifting to induction motor to achieve the efficiency of 95% so let's talk about the srm motor starting and overloading torque can be more than the twice the rated torque for example the company is uh, claiming around 100 nm of torque initially but it is going to be twice the rated torque around you will get 300 nm of torque initially so that is the reason the SRM motor is said to be the future of uh, electric vehicles. Losses, let's see how we are going to lose the efficiency, where exactly we are losing the efficiency. That is the core loss, frictional losses we get because of the uh, bearings maybe. Then uh, high stutter and the core losses we get, a high RPM in PMSM motor. That is the reason at a high uh, speed, actually the Tesla is switching to induction motor because there are no losses at the high RPM in induction motor, where else you get good amount of efficiency at high RPM. So it is bad idea to use PMSM motor at the high speed. So very uh, clever idea by uh, Elon Musk. So where exactly we lose the efficiency induction motor is iron or a core loss, mechanical losses in the brushes and the frictional losses. Induction motor have uh, the uh, slip ring. That's the reason we actually lose the efficiency in the type of, uh, in, in the form of uh, friction. Okay, so SRM uh, motor, we have again core losses, then um, other losses are there, ID current and other, all other losses are there. So let's jump on to overloading capacity. BLDC motor, really good overloading capacity as we get a really good amount of torque when we overload the motor. PMSM motor, again, uh, similar to BLDC motor, high uh, overloading torque we get. So it draws more current than the rated value. When you overload the, uh, the motor, okay initially it is going to consume lots of current and it is going to drain your battery completely whereas in srm motor starting current is only 30 percent of the rated current it this motor is really going to be the future of electric vehicles because of all these features you get here in this okay uh, the the current only it consume 30 percent of the rated current okay whereas it uh, can give you around 150 percent of torque rated torque this is really good amount of torque and really less amount of current it is going to consume Heat dissipation, uh, it is really good in BLDC, PMSM, induction motor and all other motors we get uh, really good heat, heat dissipation because it, they are exposed to air and they are air cooled motors. Okay, you can actually make them uh, water cooled also depending on the manufacturer, how actually it is uh, using the motor and designing the motor. Maintenance, it's a really low or no maintenance we get in BLDC motor, BMSM motor low maintenance, higher than PMSM motor, induction motor and SRM motor low. Uh, maintenance is required construction complex pmsa motor is very simple construction induction motor simple construction so when it is simple in construction so we have uh, we actually are dropping down the cost of the motor okay and then srm motor it is again complex structure construction structure okay cost expensive bldc motor pmsa motor again they are ex uh, expensive induction motor are uh, really cost effective motors and srm motors are also again cost effective so that is the reason SRM motor again going to be the winner of uh, all the other motors. But in other terms, availability BLDC motor is available. They require DC motor. No, no uh, special type of circuitry is required to switch from DC to AC. So when we do the head, head to head comparison of uh, all the four motors, so SRM motor is obviously going to be the winner. Okay. But when we select the motor, I basically prefer to be using BLDC motor. The reason is uh, availability and repairability and uh, efficiency. And they are uh, available widely in our area. So cost effective is not a big problem here. Efficiency because in just 12,000 rupees, you are going to get the motor controller kit, everything you get in just 12,000 rupees. And it doesn't require complex circuitry to just to ch change the voltage type from DC to AC. So that is also a uh, advantage in this type of uh, motor. So mostly BLDC motors are used. And personally, I am using BLDC motors in all of my projects in all the vehicles which I have designed. So I am using BLDC motor everywhere. 
and that's all for today and in the next video we will be looking at the type of batteries available for electric vehicle we will do head to head comparison which one is best and depending on that we will be selecting and doing the calculations so stay tuned in the next video i will be showing you the selection criteria of the batteries and in the coming videos we will be jumping onto the calculations so exactly how to design an electric vehicle depending on the calculations we will be doing the coming to the conclusion and we will start designing an electric vehicle so stay tuned see you soon and have a nice journey